Hey you who mess with JS, Aegis here and welcome back to getting started with ECMAScript 6. In the last video we have installed environment and set up Babel.js so it can compile our code from ECMAScript 6 to ECMAScript 5. In this video we're gonna start actually writing some, uh, writing some ECMAScript 6 and in this video we will do a new way of declaring variables and we will talk about keyword called let. So briefly, what let does, it uh, allows you to declare scope block variables and the official definition is let allows you to declare variables that are limited in scope to the block, statement or expression on which is it used. This is unlike the bar keyword which defines a variable globally or locally to entire function regardless of the scope. So that's like an official definition. And we're actually going to start using a let now and uh, go from use cases to use, from use case to use case. So first of all, let's let versus var. So in the global scope, let and var behave the same. So what that means that if I say let uh, global uh, var is equal to I'm global. And if I do the same thing with var, if I say var, global var uh, is equal to um, global2, these both variables in this window global scope will behave the same. So if I go ahead and say console log global, global var and uh, the other one as well, save this. We're going to see here that we are getting transcompiled version and if you go ahead here, open a new uh, tab and go to desktop, uh, ECMAScript 6, uh, uh, JSB, yeah. and if we go ahead and run this in let's say IOJS and say compiled, we're going to say we're going to get I'm global and I'm global too, so they're basically pretty much behaving in this global scope the same so uh, what that's, that means if we create a function called jsb and uh, go ahead and uh, just console log there both of these guys so if we do this and save it and just call the function itself and go ahead and run this you're gonna say see that both of these variables now are in the top root scope and anything anything inside of that scope can access them. So that's the pretty much one of the few places where these guys behave the same. Okay, so basically now we have that. So when at start we said that let is a scope block variable. That means that uh, it's differently hoisted. It's differently like compiled by the JavaScript compiler. So if, and uh, we're gonna show that now. So let's go ahead and create a function again called uh, GSB, uh, oops, GSB, and inside of that fa function let's create a loop and let's use uh, var for, for, for the first example, so var of e is equal to zero and e is less than five and e plus plus, and if we go ahead and console.log e here, so I'm, 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 the e so if you go and console log that and obviously call that function uh, jsb we're gonna get zero one two three four and that's what we expected pretty much this is just ecmascript 5 and if you go ahead here and try to console log the 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 e we're gonna get five obviously because we'll get the, the entire iteration in this variable and that's as well normal for our ECMAScript var case, ECMAScript 5 uh, var case. So let's just change this variable now to uh, uh, to let. So if we say I had let here and save this and uh, try to compile this, we're gonna get a reference error that E is not defined. And actually in the let term it's not, and why? Well. This let now has the scope of the for loop. So this let right here can only be accessed inside of this for loop and not outside of it. Uh, var, var, which we 
used uh, up until now, uh, up until this version of ECMAScript uh, 5, is uh, not bloat scope. So it means that if, if we declare a, a var here, this var is scoped inside of this function. So if we use it outside of this loop, it will work, but not let. So basically, what does that mean? That means that if we use let anywhere inside of any statement or in any loop, that variable will have only scope of that. So it, it would be the same if we used if or something like if, uh, uh, if uh, let of x is five. So if if uh, x is less than six, uh, let of epsilon is equal to one. And if we try to console that epsilon here, we'll get that epsilon is not defined. But if we, for example, change this to var and try to console log that epsilon, we're gonna get one. So all these variables are block scoped, let is block scoped. So this let right here has access to anything in this function now because it's been defined in the function itself. So instead, if we would do something like this, so if we say uh, let of x is five, now this, this let has a, scope of the function so we can use it pretty much anywhere we can use it in the loop so for x and x less than seven and x plus plus uh console log x and um if you run that we're gonna get five and six so right now this let has a scope of the function so we can use it anywhere inside of this function so basically this is very nice because let is not hoisted anymore on the top of the program on the top of the it just hoisted in its own scope and that's really great and I don't think that there's absolutely no reason not to use let everywhere almost because it's it's uh, at least uh, a little bit more control in there and uh, yeah another thing that I need to mention about let is the fact that let uh, compared to the uh, var can cannot be uh, like redefined. And what does that mean? Well, if we have something like, again, function and GSB, and if we, if we say uh, uh, var of x is equal to five and var of x is equal to six, and if we console log x, we obviously gonna get uh, nothing. Uh, so if we console log that, we're gonna get five because x, uh, when it was redefined, it had a new value of six. So this one, it, it uh, hoisted it with a five, okay, so, and then it saw that there's another declaration of X and it gave it six, or I don't know if we even have something here, like, uh, so if we have this declaration here, so this is first declaration, and then this would be second and third, so if we still pass an X here, and if we pass like 11 here and save that, we're still gonna get six because what did what this does did here is like okay x is at eleven which we pass here okay x is not eleven it's five and then it's six and okay but if we go ahead and try to do that with with let and say let of, uh, of x is five and let of x is six and try to run that try to run that properly actually if we try to console log that we ain't gonna get anything right now and uh, let me oh, okay so it didn't compile properly here what happened I don't think that my um, let's just remove this this function completely here so let's try like this but it seems my compiler stopped working or something I think so okay JSB obviously doesn't exist okay let's Okay, let's redefine this. So yeah, obviously it's actually not allowing me to do this. Actually, yeah, we, 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 we have the point. As you can see here, um, no, it's not this window. Wait, let me find where, where, where is it? So, no, let's close this, close this guy. So I will just compile. So if we remove one, it will compile because it, it, it's on uh, and uh, let's try to find that. Okay, is this our watcher? 
No, it's not. Okay, let's close this one. Okay, here's our watcher. So, what's happening here? It's giving us an error that uh, we have type error main.js line 2 duplicate declaration of x. So, basically, it's saying that type error main.js line 2 duplicate declaration of x. But if we change this to var and save, it will perfectly work. There's no error anymore. If we go ahead here, everything works perfectly fine. And if we just, uh, again, like console log that, we're gonna get sick. So you cannot re-declare, redefine your uh, variables like this. When you when you define variable with let at once, that's, that's the only thing you can do. It. Also, uh, let's take uh, uh, another example of um, taken from uh, Mozilla official documentation. I'm just gonna copy that here, which is pr pretty good uh, explanation. So in the first, uh, in the first um, function, let's, yep. So in the first function we have, um, let me just clean up a little bit so we can actually see this better. And this is not compiling, so we need to find an error. So basically here we have a function with var and we have a var declared in the function scope. And if true, assign var to 71 and then console that. And actually let's just use this function because this one will actually work because it is correctly written. And if we call this now var test here, we'll get 71, 71. And so the difference here is that this x now and this x are the same variable. So x was declared in the function scope and then it was redeclared in this if statement. And that's pretty much how the how the x work, how the variable works, uh, how the var works. And in the second example we had, which was with let, uh, and we obviously don't have a closing guy here and the let test here. Let's see if that will compile properly. Yes, it will. So here is the compiled version. So in this version, these two variables are different. So let is defined in the block scope here, and then it's defined as well in the its own scope if statement. So if we go ahead now, remove this, run this, and run it in our IOJ in our console we're gonna get 71 and 31. And these are completely two separate variables now and each one of them has its own scope. So let's see again, this guy here. So here, what, what happened is we got two same values. So let, let's just go ahead and say, okay, like this uh, um, bar. And um, here we're gonna say, uh, um, let and go ahead and run this again. So. As you can see, I'm var uh, prints out both, uh, prints out the same variable twice because obviously uh, in this scope here, this this x here and this x here is the same x because it was here and it, then it was redefined here and then now the x value is this and not the global scope. And in the in the let uh, in the let case here, let is defined here. Its scope is its scope is this. So this is its scope, the function scope. And this guy here, let x71 has its own scope, which is the statement scope. So that is the difference. So as you can see here, pretty much from these examples, it's uh, you can figure out how the let works and why is it good and uh, what kind of problems will it prevent because obviously um, these scoping things are like super, super nice to have now in, in the JavaScript. Okay. Um, so to kind of touch base on everything we mentioned, um, you you should and you can use uh, let everywhere. Obviously, we have showed how uh, how to use it in the for loops, in the if statements, or and everywhere else. We have showed how to um, use it in the functions as well. So. I think this video pretty much uh, uh, describes how let is working. Of course, this is not the most uh, uh, complex things you can do and it doesn't really describe most complex examples. But from these couple of examples, I can pretty much uh, 
with uh, with uh, safety say then that that this is more than enough for you to grasp on how the variable works. If you want to know a little bit more about variable hoisting and stuff, I would suggest you a really good course on uh, JavaScript six uh, by uh, Frontend Masters. Uh, I think it's frontendmasters.com. I need to check frontendmasters.com exactly. The course is called ECMAScript six. If I am not Mistaken, I'm gonna check. Yeah, the course is called um, uh, JS Next ECMAScript 6. I'm gonna copy the link here for you guys and smack it here. I would really suggest this. So, this is the course. Uh, uh, you can actually just go to frontendmasters.com so you don't really go with this ID or hash, whatever it is. So, anyway, this was the video on Let's. And the next video, we're gonna continue with ECMAScript 6. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna talk about const because const is just constant. I don't know what to really say about it. It's it's pretty much the same as in any language when you define a variable as a constant. It's read only, you can't change it anywhere in your program. So, Thanks for watching this video again. Uh, I hope you can uh, mess a little bit with the JS and play with what we just learned and uh, keep rocking, keep learning the JS because uh, you don't want to write a mess with your JS.